Everyone hear me? Doesn't sound like the mic's off. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm on. I think it's on. The light's on. Is it good? Okay. All right, I want to welcome everybody to the planning board meeting um, that is scheduled for June 6th. Um, and uh, we've got actually fairly limited agenda tonight, of course, uh, I mean today. Uh, I think their agenda is available for everyone, was that correct? I don't know about everyone, but we <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll call the meeting to order and we'll get moving. Uh, we do have a quorum. I do expect some of the other board members to be here today as well. Maybe they'll come in in just a few minutes, but uh, comes one of them now. Has everyone had a chance to look at the agenda? Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented for today? I'll move to approve. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Second. We have a second. Greg, uh, any discussion regarding the agenda? Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carries. Did everyone have a chance to uh, <coughs> take a look at the minutes from the May 16th meeting? Everyone receive those? <clears throat> Are there any corrections or do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Hudgens. A second? Second. Mr. Phillips seconded. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. <clears throat> the first item on our agenda today that requires action is a public hearing uh, regarding a zoning map amendment. Um, the applicant is Vivian Davis Carmack, uh, and she has applied to rezone tax lot pin number 8697 hyphen 44 hyphen 8038 which is also known as 112 Lost Trail Drive I believe it's in Candler it is currently zoned single-family residential R1 and she would like to have that rezone to R3 um, Debbie if you would uh, give us staff's overview and recommendation please the um, applicant has requested rezoning of a lot which is approximately 0 0.33 acres it is currently vacant and is located northeast of the intersection of Fairmont Road and Lost Trail Drive the properties around this lot um, do contain single wide and double wide mobile homes but the surrounding property is zoned R1 which does not allow mobile homes the requested zoning would not be consistent with the land use plan update as the update indicates that R3 is suitable for higher density uses in mobile homes. The proposed R3 zoning would allow uses currently not allowed in the surrounding R1 zoning district such as mobile home parks, multifamily, and travel trailer parks. If the property were rezoned, it could lead to the encroachment of R3 zoning in the area, bringing additional mobile homes, mobile home parks, and multifamily development. Therefore, the planning department recommends denial of the request. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> is Ms. Carmack here? Would you like to speak on behalf of yourself, please, ma'am? And if in doing so, Please come up to the microphone and introduce yourself and uh, tell us where you're from as well. My name is Vivian Carmack and I'm from Asheville and I um, purchased this lot thinking uh, it was advertised and sold to me as a lot that you could put either um, manufactured housing, mobile home, double wide, single wide on. And so I opted to purchase this to put my home there so I could retire on this lot. And, um, it, and spent several thousand dollars on the lot um, with clearing water tap and meter and so on. Didn't know until I went for the septic permit that I couldn't move my house there. So the thing is there's I think maybe only one other lot um, in this subdivision. It's the Lost Four subdivision. 
um, that is currently for sale and all the lots as she said are single and double wide homes um, there are no stick built homes there are no modulars um, so it, it's not like I would be trying to put my house somewhere where it would really bring down someone else's value as far as stick built or modular um, I am trying to get the zoning changed so that I can put my house on this property okay uh, does anyone have any questions for Ms. Carmine? I didn't. Do you have, can I borrow that just yeah. please? I didn't get one of those. Let me look at it. <coughs> I think I know where this is. Yeah, it's already, the you, Lost Trail. I'm sorry. Not, no, you're fine. You already have your water tap? Yeah. Okay. Got my first water bill and don't even have a line on the property. <laughs> <laughs> have you had any uh, objections from your neighbors that you know of? Yes. I'd like to object. Uh, there'll be a, you'll have time for that in just a minute. We're yes, a and he hearing. is objecting because I have a single wide home and his is not a single wide, although the house behind him is a single wide. Okay. Okay. I do feel like um, if I can't put my house here, then it would be difficult, if not impossible, to resell this because I I can't imagine anyone wanting to put a stick built house or a modular in the middle of manufactured homes. Okay, are there any other questions for Ms. Carmack? Okay, uh, well thank you. Um, thank you. <clears throat> we will now open the public hearing process related to this request to rezone this property. Um, now the rules are such you've got three minutes to state your position and I've got a <coughs> timer so we'll crank it up but uh, please limit your comments to three minutes and come up uh, individually and introduce <coughs> yourself and tell us where you live uh, do I have anyone that would like to there you go hello my name is John Iverson and I'm the property owner adjacent to the property she's talking about and uh, I think uh, the city or the county will be backpedaling to degrade that property and what it's going to do is set precedence for the other two pieces of property in that cul-de-sac and personally I don't think there's anyone in here that would want a single wide sitting right next to their brand new double wide home and uh, it's just going to degrade the value of, of the surrounding homes, and I just uh, don't really want to go that way. I think the city had its reasons to upgrade that property, and for the county or the city, whoever is in charge, to backpedal on this issue, I think we're backing up. And I think any time county or city starts backing up, we need to take a second look. And, and I'm strongly against having uh, the single white is in the other cul-de-sac, it's not in our cold. There's not a single, single wide in our cul-de-sac. She will be the only single wide in our cul-de-sac. The other property is on the back side. There's not once. And I personally, I would just rather not see this happen. No. And there's another piece of property, like I say, that <laughs> I just want to set precedence and have this thing start snowballing. Next thing we know, every single piece of property, everyone's going to be wanting to do this. So we have to stop it sometime if we make a ruling. You know, let's stick with the ruling. Now, let me make sure I understand this. Your property, you have a double wide on your property. Yeah, it's brand and new. And it joins her property. It's adjacent to it. Okay. Right. Are you on the north or south side? Mm. North, north. North side. That's it right there. That's it. Any more questions? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else that would like to comment on this application? Again, please state your name and where you're from. <clears throat> My name is John Zukowski. I own the property diagonally across. Uh, from the subject property. <clears throat> I bought this property many years ago 
and uh, it's now a rental property of mine. However, uh, the lure of that cul-de-sac was that it was all double wide trailers and no single wides were there. Um, I noticed that this property or the uh, the subject property has a diagonal line in there. It's, a, it's been noted that it's a .33 acre lot. Uh, I just picked up in your lobby a uh, pamphlet <clears throat> about septic uh, systems and their maintenance. It's soil facts. It's from the NC Cooperative Extension. Um, it shows a picture where, you sh where it shows a house, an septic system, and a repair area on a 0.33 acre lot, even if it's a single wide, even if it's only a two bedroom single wide, it's gonna be really hard to put in a septic system, the trailer, and a repair area. I just don't think that that's a, something that's possible. I really feel for the lady that bought the property. Uh, I think that she has uh, something that she could look into about who she bought it from, but uh, I'd like to go on the record stating that uh, I'm against having a single wide placed on that property. <coughs> that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else? <clears throat> Again, please introduce yourself and tell us where you're from. Okay. My name is Barbara Iverson. I live at 118 Lost Trail Drive. Uh, directly next to the gal who would like to move in. I, I feel for her, but, it, but I wrote these down so I shouldn't ramble. I have a copy of the restricted covenants here, and these are good rules. Provisions were made not only to uphold the integrity of the community, but also allows for the future financial growth, if not stability, of the landowners. Next door to us, they just put some wonderful improvements on. We just upgraded from a 60-foot to an 80-foot uh, trailer. Hazel uh, intent, a leaf does not dare fall on their property. Uh, uh, there's a cleared lot across the street. With what's going on now, should we be afraid of what they might be able to put in? We all have double wides. It was not a problem. Uh, please help us maintain our standards. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to get up and speak regarding this application for rezoning? Well, it appears that there is not. Uh, so let's open, let's close the public hearing portion of this process and discuss it as board. Mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll say something first. I live very close to this property. As y'all know that I have always been a proponent uh, and concerned about the changes of the zoning ordinance that don't allow manufacturing homes anymore in R1 and R2s. And um, it's a problem. And this is another case we have before us. Someone's trying to, to, to have uh, manufactured home issues handled. And their only recourse is to ask for an R3 zoning. Um, in this particular case, I think that the neighborhood uh, character of being double wides is an issue um, that we need to, t to pay attention to <coughs> for property values. Um, so I'm not going to support a single wide in a neighborhood that is obviously already supporting double wides at this time. Uh, the lot size <coughs> is, is perked or not, um, you know, a challenge. Um, but I, I want to stress again to the board and hope that the commission would look at this again so that we have some choices other than R3 for folks who want to buy an affordable home and live in this county. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Anyone else have comments? Well, this looks like basically it would be spot zoning if we tried to put R3 in that, in that uh, area. Mm -hmm. There's no R3 anywhere around there. There's also the issue that uh, R3 allows multifamily, so you always have to think of all of the uses that the property, if zoned R3, could be used for, and I think that would probably be detrimental to the neighborhood. Okay. Josh, do you have any thoughts? 
No, it's unfortunate. Uh, Rod and Joe are both correct. I don't see as how we can change the zoning, but it, it's an unfortunate situation. I, I, I would add, I, I don't think I can support this either, but I, I think even if this pass, uh, Ms. Carmack, I, I, having done this hundreds of times, I can't fathom getting a septic permit on this size p property today. And um, it's by the county. <coughs> Um, anyway, like I said, with with 100% repair area, which is required, I just I see it as, as a problem, and I, I, I hate it. Okay. Um, would someone like to make a a notion a motion? Excuse me, to either accept or deny this application. I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. To deny? I make a motion to deny uh, um, this uh, request Ms. based Ms. Wood, on. If I can interrupt, yeah. if you would also include in your motion that whether it is inconsistent. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, based on the fact that it's inconsistent with the land use plan. Is that right? Yes. Do I need to say why? Are we good? As Yes, as provided in the as um, provided in the documents submitted by staff. Second. Okay, we have a second by Mr. Hudgens. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. <clears throat> all in favor, signify their support by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Sorry. Okay, next item on our agenda is uh, what I think everybody's here for. Glad to see the hotel industry uh, represented this time. Uh, it's public, um, excuse me, discussion of zoning standards for rooming houses and vacation rentals. Um, for those of you board members that don't know what's transpired, um, the language that we proposed and sent to the county commissioners <coughs> was not heard basically and they've asked us to uh, take a look at it and uh, come back with another recommendation to retool it to some degree um, in late April can't recall April 25th April 21st um, Mike and I and John um, were invited and did attend a meeting <clears throat> that was um, put together by the Chamber of Commerce and it included all aspects of this issue we had the hotel folks the B&B folks the uh, real estate group that was in favor of the vacation rentals um, and so forth I thought it was a very productive meeting I know I learned a lot from it um, and here we are today subsequent to that uh, again the commissioners have asked us to take a, a relook at this issue um, and having said so I think kind of where we go and I'm going to ask John and Mike both to make some comments as well where we are today is, uh, again, it's back in our lap. Um, we need to discuss how we proceed from here. What I envision or how I envision us proceeding is that maybe we try to collect some more information between now and our next meeting, which will be two weeks from today, uh, with the goal being at our next meeting, that is the one in mid-June, to uh, craft or recraft the language, if that be our pleasure to send back to uh, the commissioners following the uh, public comment period. And basically that translates in this getting back to the commissioners sometime in the month of August, it looks like now. So having said that, I know it was very brief, uh, John, would you like to uh, comment as well? I think the, the meeting of the chamber, I think I wanted to first of all thank Kelly Miller for putting a, a very well-rounded group together for us. I mean, there was people there from the, the hotel industry. There was people there from B&B. &B, there were people there that rented their homes. There were also realtors that specialized in vacation rentals. So there was a, a very good group of people. Uh, and it, I, can, I think it all gave us a better perspective on just the, the amount of people that are involved in this industry where you, you realize that okay there's you know there's a lot going on and I think that 
everybody brought a lot to the table. I think that when you, when you look at the, from the hotel industry, it's, we're, we've got a set of regulations that we've got to go by and not necessarily somebody that basically sets himself up on the internet as, as you know, renting a home as a vacation rental do not go by the same standards that, that we do. So, I mean, there was that perspective, plus the, the B&Bs were kind of the same way. But on the other end, when you look at from the realtor side or the individual homeowner, it's, you know, I have, you know, I have a desire to rent my home. I may have purchased a property to do nothing but to do it as a vacation rental. And then you had the, also people that say, you know, I don't want to violate any rules that the, the county may have. So I want to, you know, I want to buy by the rules. And I think that they ought to be allowed in, in certain districts. So it was a very good discussion. I guess it went on for, I don't know, about an hour and a half. I think something so. Something like that. Yeah. So, but I mean, I think you'll hear today some of the same, I guess, comments that, that we had. So uh, it's, it is a tough decision to see where we want to head, you know, in, in dealing with, with mobile homes. Do you have anything? I mean, mo uh, mobile homes, I'm sorry, uh, vacation rentals. No, I, I, nothing really to add except this board just has to determine whether or not it wants to modify or retract the recommendation it made previously or, or tinker with it and move forward, just as you indicated a few minutes ago. Okay. Uh, a couple things that came out of the meeting, I think, that were consistent, uh, at least one thing that stuck in my mind, a couple things. One is, um, of course, this came from the B&B &B and the uh, hotel industry. You know, when you're out there renting homes on a daily basis or even a weekly basis, uh, you're not, and you're not compliant, you're not held to the same rules and regulations as the hotel industry or the B&B &B industry, you know, the playing field's not level. And you're, you're in the commercial hotel business when you're renting on a daily and a weekly basis. That's one of the things that came out pretty consistent. Um, I think that uh, the city has something in place, some language, frankly, that I have not read that maybe we need to review. And I, and I also think that uh, staff may have some uh, language from uh, other communities across the country. Uh, that addresses this issue that we might want to review as well that we as far as i know we didn't review it the first go around uh debbie is that the case regarding you have some language from other communities we did look at language from other communities okay, okay. one of the things i think that uh, we should do is uh ask staff to distribute that to us uh, between now maybe electronically between now and our next meeting so we can digest it and having heard hearing comments today blend the two and come back here in two weeks again with the goal of trying to retool the language to where it's palatable as it can be to everyone <coughs> um, it i know we have a lot of people here and they're all here for that reason <laughs> to speak today uh, we're not having a public hearing today regarding this issue uh, we will somewhat later but we do have a public comment period that's on our agenda is item number six that we'll go to in just a little bit and certainly you can come up and comment at that time. Um, just go around the room. Is there anyone, I know you hadn't had much time to think about it, I'm not sure, other than uh, maybe having read Mark Barrett's uh, article in the paper yesterday, you may not even have known it was going to be on our agenda today. But uh, does anyone have any comments or thoughts? regarding the process as we go forward or anything else related to the issue that you'd like to talk about i think we're here to listen today yeah, yeah i think so too i think so and too. uh maybe i might suggest if there's one particular interest group uh, maybe we could cut down on the time if one person could represent them or yeah does everyone understand that joe made a very good point um if the interest groups could consolidate their presenters rather than four or five different folks from the hotel industry or whatever don't have to do this but it would save some time um, same thing with the b and b's and, and the real estate group as well otherwise we'll be glad to sit here and wade through this 
but everybody will have three minutes each. Again, this is not the, we are not here today for the public hearing related to this. We're here to listen though and uh, digest your ideas and uh, walk away uh, along with what staff's going to uh, give us in the next couple of weeks with again the goal of trying to retool this language later on this month. So thank you, Joe. That's a good point. Anything else? Okay, then we'll move off that uh, item, which is item number five on the agenda, and we'll go to item six, which is the uh, public uh, comment uh, item. Um, again, uh, if you would, if you'd like to come up, speak in the microphone, introduce yourself, tell us uh, where you're from and who you represent, and limit it to three minutes. So I will open the public comment period of this uh, meeting today. Would someone like to come up? Hey, Mike, how are you? My name is Mike Butcher. I represent the Asheville Board of Realtors. Um, I think it's important to point out that we have members that are on both sides of this issue. But we work by committee and majority rules, and uh, we had made a resolution that was given to the commissioners some while back. And I'm not sure it ever came before this board. Uh, so I thought I'd just take a minute and read this so, so it summarizes it in a sense. Whereas the new ordinance impacts negatively real estate sales within the county by eliminating second home purchasers who want to rent their home after purchase and whereas many subdivisions in the county already have their own covenants and restrictions that apply to rental properties. The new county ordinance directly conflicts with some of these various restrictions in place within the subdivision, and whereas the new ordinance is difficult to enforce and the enforcement is complaint-driven, only which makes it difficult to apply the ordinance within the county and punishes the honest and rewards the dishonest who do not abide by the county ordinances. And whereas the new ordinance impacts the overall economy of the county by reducing tourist dollars and decreasing county revenue, in the form of lower sales and occupancy tax. And whereas real estate firms within the county who handle vacation rentals are financially harmed by this ordinance, and whereas the lack of rental home availability for people wanting to rent mountain cabins for an authentic mountain experience rather than a hotel motel experience <laughs> drives tourists to rent in other counties. Um, that was resolved by our board of directors and offered to the county commissioners. And that basically summarizes, I think, the position. We certainly understand uh, the other side of the issue, but uh, the reality is if we ever opened up uh, vacation rentals to the community, it would destroy the communities. Quite honestly, and I think we all know that there are a great number of uh, rentals everywhere in our city and county, and a great number of those are vacation rentals, and they've been around forever, the, the issue, of course, associated with it. I'll be happy to give you copies if you so desire, and I appreciate the opportunity. I'd like to have one, I'd please. Like one. Okay. Okay. Um, anyone else? Uh, good morning. My name is Herman Turk. I'm the general manager of the Renaissance Hotel. and. Uh, I've been in Asheville 11 years, and I was a member of the TDA board for approximately <coughs> eight years. And uh, the position, uh, a bit of the position for me as a hotelier, obviously uh, we spend uh, uh, many, many hours and many, many dollars uh, abiding by all the regulations that, uh, that we're required to abide by from a life safety standpoint, from a health st inspection standpoint, business licenses, utility rates, et cetera, et cetera. And so we... Uh, invest tremendous sums of uh, money into our businesses and uh, and while we're not totally opposed to the uh, to the vacation rentals the the whole notion of daily rentals uh, certainly seems to be one that our industry provides for we also have uh, we have hotel and lodging products that uh, that meet the needs of the daily rental the extended stay rental uh, our guests or people that want to come in for any period of time and so uh, we would just urge you to uh, Make sure that the language that's crafted for this uh, takes uh, our industry into account, and as well as the life safety issues uh, and, and health issues, uh, health inspection issues, business licensing, uh, that we all have to abide by and that we all uh, uh, graciously do. So there's my thoughts. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Is there anyone else? Please come forward. <laughs> I'm Barbara Melton. I'm the vice president of Coalition of Asheville Neighborhoods. We represent something around 65 different neighborhoods in the city of Asheville. We fought this rabbit with the city of Asheville. Didn't fight it, we worked with them. Uh, simply because we had Realtors, bankers, developers, uh, con contractors, you name it, we had it. We, we fought this rabbit for three years in lengthy meetings. Um, when it all came down to the final thing, the city of Asheville only allows this in commercial and other non-residential areas because Please think that the bed and breakfast, the hotels and so forth, have taxes they have to pay that these folks don't. You also have to remember that when it's complaint driven, who are you going to send? Y'all don't have the money to hire ex extra enforcement personnel and a law is only as good as the enforcement is that, that is in place. And that doesn't matter if it's county or city. Um, if it was a good economy, and we could hire enough folks to enforce this and have someone check these because the Montford community has been inundated with them for years and have had complaint after complaint after complaint. We had two in the Azalea Road area of East Asheville that we had, uh, had to shut down. I'm sure they're probably running up again. Had one on Edwin Place that was a protracted fight that we finally got <coughs> sold and the folks moved into my neighborhood. but. I don't have a problem with it if we have the enforcement, enforcement, enforcement. If you don't, don't do it. Do not put this on residential folks to do the job of a city or a county inspector. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Catch the lady in the middle first, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm a little confused at first because please I state, thought, excuse I'm me, sorry. Please that, state your name. Just yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Marsha okay. Zerlup. I live in Buncombe County. Thank you, Marsha. Uh, I thought that we were going to be talking about the use issues more than we were the definitional issues, which seems to be uh, one of the larger portions that's before the the board right now. But um, putting that aside about how what you call it and how you define it and how many units, et cetera, et cetera, I am much more concerned about what zones you are going to permit vacation rentals in as a permitted use. Uh, let me it would be easier for me to read what I what I'm thinking than for to try to speak off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. The county zoning ordinance was created to provide an organized land use plan recognizing the need for both stability and growth. The language of defining residential districts, RLD, R1, and R2, makes clear that they were created with a recognition of the need to provide areas for individual family neighborhoods, as well as to address problems with topography and public services. You are now proposing to change the very essence of those districts by allowing vacation rentals as a permitted use. Hotels are excluded from all residential districts. Vacation rentals have similar limitations, but are also allowed in the R3 and neighborhood service districts. In none of these places, though, is there an expectation of the non-disturbance characteristics of the other residential zones. Vacation rentals serve the same function as hotels, except on a smaller scale. Negative impacts from vacation rentals in a single-family residential district have the potential to be the same as a hotel. Noise, parking problems, increased traffic, inadequate waste control, and general disturbance. In addition, lack of the typical on-site management that a hotel has will make it considerably harder for an immediate response to problems at vacation rentals. Decisions by the North Carolina Supreme Court addressing zoning modifications, including Clear Good Neighbors v. South Davidson, Township of Denton, Blaze v. City of Raleigh, and Crisman v. Guilford County, all stated that the zoning authority must consider compatibility, and that is the key issue, compatibility. 
must consider compatibility of the proposed rezoning with previously enumerated designs and objectives and that there must be a clear showing of a reasonable basis for rezoning. These opinions later became the basis for state legislation passed in 2005, which specifically demanded that there be both consistency with previously created plans and a clear showing of a reasonable basis for zoning decisions. Within those parameters, we must ask whose interest is served by expanding the number of districts where vacation rentals are a permitted use. Clearly, that use is incompatible with the family-based residential districts the county was so careful to protect and entirely at odds with an organized, well-structured approach to land use planning that was the basis for enacting the ordinance in the first place. Simply put, this change, this amendment to the use, would serve the interests of a few at the expense of many. And therefore, I request that you withdraw your support to amend the ordinance to permit vacation rentals in other districts and that you advise the commissioners immediately of that decision. One other thing, please think about this on a personal level. We all talk about this in the, in the greater objective of what the ordinance is. Think about how you would feel if a vacation rental were next to you. How would that affect the use and enjoyment of the property by you and your family? I think you know the answer to that. It would be a tremendous disturbance. You thought about the zoning ordinance for three years. Please stick with, I will, I will <laughs> zip it in one second. Um, one. You, you worked it long <laughs> enough, yes. You, work, you can't keep a lawyer from talking. Uh, uh, you, you worked hard enough and long enough to come up with the plan, the integrated uses, what fits here, what fits there. Please don't do a piecemeal approach. You just did the right decision on the R3 change. That's the same problem you've got here. Please don't do it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Anyone else? Again, please state your name and where you're from. My name is Debbie Applewhite. I live in Asheville. I am a realtor. Um, a realtor who opposes scattered site vacation rentals. So I'm sorry I wasn't included in the discussion. Um, it might have been more fun. Um, I have experienced uh, vacation rentals in another community. And the way they dealt with it was to kind of bunch things. Because when it comes to vacation rentals, uh, I, I recently read a letter from a, an owner of a and b and it, I felt as though she was nominating her renters for sainthood. I only wish that were true. My experience is that people behave, behave, for two reasons. Number one, if there's supervision. Number two, if they have a little skin in the game. Now, by skin in the game, I'm talking about money. When it comes to vacation rentals, they don't have much money in that game. And if it's scattered site, there's no supervision. I understand that one of the reasons this has come up is that vacation rentals exist all over the county. And because they're in violation, it's how do we deal with this? Well, the easiest way to deal with it is to make it legal all over the county. The other th argument that I've heard is that this makes easier uh, someone to qualify for a mortgage for a second home. That, unless it is very tight circumstances, is not true, not true that it's easier to get a mortgage for a second home. And because this is scattered site, you don't have supervision. What you are doing without policing is to ask the neighbors to police. And very frankly, suitcases make lousy neighbors. I certainly hope you will reject this. Thank you very much. Uh, next. Robert Brown. I live in uh, Butler Mountain area, southeast Ash of east, southeast of Asheville, and uh, I am currently experiencing a vacation rental in the in the area, and uh, not in my subdivision, but the traffic and the people pass through, and it's nearby. <coughs> uh, there are a lot of things that uh, I, I guess that the public wasn't represented at the Chamber of Commerce uh, <coughs> operation. 
it was just well, the special interests that are involved. Is that right? I won't get into the discussion because you're limited three minutes anyway. Yeah. And I don't want to take your time. But it was a broad cross section of folks. Was it? There. Was it yeah. individuals? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it has been indicated by the county attorney's office, I think, that uh, what we in subdivisions need to do is just enforce our covenants. And uh, and I say to that, show me a covenant that specifically prohibits <laughs> vacation rentals. They don't exist, or rarely, if at all. And uh, so if you, if you do this, if you take this action, you put the authority of the county, to a certain extent, behind the people that are, would be our uh, the defendants if we decide, decide to have to take them to court to enforce our covenants. So what we don't need is the county uh, against us in an action to enforce a covenant. And that's what it would amount to. We've got people in this particular vacation rental that have used firearms against the, against, uh, the covenants in the neighborhood and a number of other things. We've had people bust in for a party at this place, a one-night party, and uh, a raucous party at that. And so this is going in the wrong direction. This is supposed to be a neighborhood, as was said earlier, for, for family living. And you, it's, it's totally inappropriate to mix this. I consider it a version of spot zoning again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, uh, my name is Bob Gans. I live in the uh, same Fairview community that uh, the previous Bob does. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and repeat a lot of what he said uh, because I could. And the, uh, the factors that occur in that particular house uh, are a problem for the neighbors. As someone else said, the neighbors are basically the only enforcement. Uh, and basically what it comes down to is our safety and our security is at risk. And you have a responsibility here to think beyond just the commercial interests which you've heard from and think about the residential perspective. Okay? And uh, I certainly hope that you will. The, uh, the, the broader issue that Bob alluded to uh, on a couple of individual examples is that the industry here the realtors who are for it, the, uh, uh, the vacation homeowners, uh, talk about the demographic. They talk about the demographic being older folks who aren't here to party. In fact, are you Mr. Barrett? Mm -hmm. Okay, in Mr. Barrett's article, they talked about they're not beach partiers. Well, that's probably true for 90% of them, but it's the other 10% of them that give us problems. Uh, in the case of the one in our area, uh, you know, I don't know who these people are that are partying, but in the last year we've had three of them. We have teens walking around the area and preteens who are scared by what's going on in that house. It really is having an impact on our community. Uh, I certainly don't think it's appropriate in this type of community, which, by the way, is an RLD. Uh, you know, and I certainly. Uh, would like to see you uh, withdraw your proposal and leave the zoning the way it is. However, if you do decide you're looking for some political middle ground, uh, I would hope that at very least you give us regulations that protect our safety and security, that prevent these people from, uh, from having 10 or 12 cars in front of a single vacation rental, and in our community, 10 or 12 cars running by is a significant impact on traffic. So uh, I certainly urge you to turn it down or at very least put appropriate regulations that uh, protect the safety and the security of the homeowners and residents in these areas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gans. Uh, anyone else? Hi, my name is Paige Henretta, and I, well, I own property in the Butler area that these two gentlemen were just talking about. And my lot, which we 
we're hoping to build on is right beside <coughs> the house that they're talking about that has become a vacation rental. I'm also on the board of the association. We have gone round and round for hours and hours and hours with this problem in our community. Right now we are at $5,000 in legal expenses trying to deal with this problem. That is significant. Um, we have not come to a resolution yet. We're still working on it. And I am just here to ask you to help us with that because it's like some other women pointed out, it is in incompatible with our neighborhood. Our neighborhood, people bought up there to live in a gated community. Our roads are privately, we pay for our roads ourselves. They're not state maintained. We do not have a guard at, or feel like we need to have a guard or could afford to have a guard placed at our gate like some of the other beach rental properties or other rental properties. Um, my um, limited experience with rental properties, my father-in-law owns one, and he tells me how things are broken, how things are stolen, repeated nuisance problems that go on with rental properties. And I, and I think in general people, they don't have a responsibility to that property, so they don't really care about it. My concern where we are is we do not have water on the mountain, no city water. We have wells. My concern are having transients in our neighborhood with fires. A lot of times when we have the dry periods, fires on a mountain could wipe out our whole mountain. We do not have water. The nearest hydrant is on Webb Creek Road, which is miles and miles down the mountain. Significant problem. So I am just here to ask you to please retract your vacation rentals. I'm in, um, sorry, L, R, D, whatever. Yes, I, I know. yes thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm Dewey Andrew, and I live in the Fairview community also. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of, or on my behalf, but about three different problems, three different areas. As a developer, we, uh, and I've developed a few subdivisions in here in Henderson County, uh, we spend a lot of money to try to sell lots and houses, and we put restrictions on our development so that we can. And most of the restrictions are to limit business ownership in the communities as well as things like this. So in my opinion, this is operating a business in a community where it shouldn't be. So as a developer, I'd certainly be against it because it certainly doesn't help you to sell a lot to someone and then it come back at you later and them complaining about, well, you sold me a lot in a house and now I've got a business next to me. I'm also a homeowner in the community, so I'm against uh, having something next to me or near me that's a, that's a business or an overnight rental. Also, I'm a partner in a hotel business. Um, the hotels certainly uh, are under a lot of restrictions. They have to do a lot of things for public safety. They have to pay a lot of taxes. They have to do other things that uh, these, the people that are renting on a daily basis in a development do not. So I would certainly urge you not to pass this in the way it's, it is now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dewey. Anyone else? My name is Liz Wiederhold. I spoke to you all during the last hearing. I'll try not to repeat myself because you've heard enough. Um, I support, in general, the, um, the changes to the ordinance. There is one thing that I missed altogether on first reading of this, and that was that the um, uh, permitted use table actually puts in new restrictions in the open use and some of the um, non-residential districts makes this a, makes a um, person who owns two or more vacation rentals move into a conditional use which we didn't discuss and nobody discussed but I, I think is um, is an issue because these are open use districts and um, I, I personally own two vacation rentals. If I opened a third vacation rental, I would have to make that a conditional use, and I'm out in the middle of nowhere. So I don't know that that was intended, but I noticed that, that on the table later after that hearing. 
As far as this hearing is concerned, uh, or I'm sorry, this um, issue is concerned in this comment period today, the issue that brought it back here is the concern from the hotel and bed and breakfast industry that this is some, something of unfair competition primarily. Um, nothing really could be further from the truth. Vacation rental guests are a special group of people who are sp planning a special experience, a special trip. They are first and foremost wanting privacy, which they can't get in a bed and breakfast or in a hotel. They don't want to share any space with other people. They want to cook their own meals. Many are families or extended families that want to cook their own breakfast, lunch, that type of thing. And they often want indoor or outdoor private space where they can play or gather or whatever like that. They can't get those things in, in, in another industry and so therefore that's why vacation rental demand has, um, has developed. If they were entirely prohibited in our area, would these people go to, to hotels? They wouldn't. They would go somewhere else. They would go to Lake Lure or somewhere else where they can have the experience they're looking for because what they're looking for is not just a place to sleep for a night. They're looking for an experience. Will there be a sudden surge in vacation rentals? No. Uh, a quick survey of the internet shows that we have somewhere around 1,500 advertised. I'd say some of those are duplicates, so maybe 1,200, something like that. Um, those are going to, some of those are going to age out. The typical uh, property owner um, stays in the business for less than five years. And uh, they purchased the home because they wanted to do uh, retirement and so they wanted to rent the home until they could retire. They can't sell the home and they're sort of stuck. They don't want it to go into foreclosure and so they decide they'll rent until they can sell, etc. Or they could also be in, the ho in a home exchange or a home swap program, which is pretty common internationally. And that actually, I believe, would fall under this ordinance, the way that it's crafted. If they can't use their home for a vacation rental, they will use it for a long-term rental. And I want to emphasize that I think every neighborhood should consider seriously, I own both long-term rentals and vacation rentals, and I would far rather have a vacation rental next door to me than a long-term rental. The um, final thing I would say is um, this is not the city. We don't compete with the city. We're out in the middle of nowhere. We chose to live in the county because it's the county. I would suggest as you, as you look at a modification that perhaps in deference to the hotel industry and the bed and breakfast that, that be changed, the definition be changed to um, which are rented for two nights or more to tourists because no one in the vacation rental industry rents for one night. It's too much work. It's not the same as a hotel where you have the cleaning staff and that kind of thing. So that would be a very simple fix that may, may help somewhat in the um, overnight stays and that we look at the permitted use table to get open back up open use. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Winkenwerner, again, I'll ask everyone to please limit your comments to three minutes. Um, I'm all, uh, my name is John Winkenwerder. I have uh, Hampton, Hampton Inns here as well as Homewood Suites Hilton. Um, <clears throat> Herman uh, Turk from the Renaissance spoke in regards to hotels. Uh, first, let me say thank you for letting me speak to this board. Um, I'd like to dispel a couple of myths. I, the, the idea that a vacation rental person is different than a person that stays in some type of hotel is incorrect. Uh, we go on, my family, we go on two beach trips a year. One time we stay in a hotel, the next time, the other trip we stay in a vacation rental on the beach. Um, we're the same family, we're the same demographic. So the idea that it's a diff demographic is wrong. Uh, secondly, we, uh, as well as Mr. Storto over here with Biltmore Farms. We have a Homewood Suites by Hilton, which is extended stay. Uh, it's not, it, folks do rent by the night, but it is not uh, uh, all of our customers. We have folks that rent for several days, weeks, and months. So we are in the extended stay business, as is Residence Inn and many other extended stay hotels here in Asheville. Uh, it's important that we understand that uh, uh, it, this is a problem within the hotel business and for the county. I can't emphasize enough. We thank all our customers and intend on them being great folks that uh, follow all rules and are great customers. Uh, coming to a Hilton for, you know, $100, $150, $200 a day. If that was the case, we wouldn't feel the need to have security guards, but we do, and I think most of these hotels do as well. 
we hire full-time security from the Buncombe County Sheriff's Department to stay at our hotels. And again, no, it's not for the 99% of the people that stay in our hotel. It is for the when we have a problem. And I can't emphasize enough that our county, as a county, we need to represent when folks come here to vacation and we advertise and market to them that they're going to be in a safe environment. While that no one can guarantee that 100%, our hotels and all hotels in Buncombe County, as far as I know, go to great lengths to provide security, to provide safety, to provide fire safety, to ha be up to the codes, and to provide anything and everything that we can do for the safety and security of our guests. And from what I have even heard in this uh, session this morning, that becomes very difficult when you're simply renting a home out for a few nights to someone you don't know and there is no one there to be secure and to see that that happens no security no management and so forth so again and our folks by the way too they do eat at an extended stay we have a kitchen in our hotel so we are in that business as well but i urge you to look at the safety security regulations that the hotel and bed and breakfast industry follow and i can't imagine it being able to do that just on a voluntarily basis without uh, the um, authority that sees to it that folks that come here here are going to have a safe and secure vacation. So I appreciate you hearing me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, next. Again, please state your name and where you're from. My name is Andy Brockmeyer. I am a resident of the city of Asheville. I am not a realtor. I support vacation rentals. Uh, I believe that, although I'm sorry a lot of folks have had a bad experience being next to vacation rentals, I feel that people are overreacting. Um, the Folks who own vacation rentals have to keep their, their places uh, to a higher standard, I believe, than most hotels, or their business would uh, fall off. Um, they, w they rely on repeat customers. Um, also, d encourage you all to, to not underestimate the value of attracting a tourist. Um, more tourists to this area can only benefit the economy further. I've been a resident here for eight years, and uh, I grew up out west in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where my mother has a vacation rental cottage next to her house. She relies upon that income and her Social Security to get by without having um, the, the ability to do what she wants to with her property. She would be limited in her financial resources. I grew up there. And I enjoyed meeting the different people that would come through and stay at her guest house. I have found that uh, when I used to work in the service industry, people who come to visit a town, a tourist-based town like this, are uh, quite enjoyable, interesting, and most often affluent people who are here to spend money. And a lot of them don't want the sanitized feel of a hotel or the uh, dorm room type of feel of the bed and breakfast experience. So I would encourage uh, the county to, uh, to let people do what they want with their properties. Also, uh, it has been suggested that there's a 30% occupancy rate with hotels and vacation rentals. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but I, I don't see that increasing the traffic a lot. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Brockmeyer. Next. Good morning. Morning. My name is Sparrow Wood. I live in Fairview in the Butler Highland where um, several of my neighbors have spoke already. But we've, um, 
we moved there and we thought it was single family, uh, no businesses. And this house was built at the same time I was building my house. And I have two teenage daughters and who are active runners in high school sports. And there's a, a circuit of several miles. You can run five, 10 Ks up there all behind a gate. It's great. But now there's renters in here that, and people coming through groups of 10 cars, 12 cars, sometimes all guys, sometimes mixed families. But now I'm, I feel nervous when my daughters go to run. And so um, that's one point. But the, um, the fact that they're a business, I think is something that, you know, we, we have our own covenants against it. And there's, right now it's caused a split in the neighborhood and we're, we're trying to figure it out. But, but thank you. Thank you. Lady in the rear, please. Hello, my name is Valerie Larea. I live in Montford. I own the Abington Green Bed and Breakfast as I have for 18 years now. Uh, that means I was around pre-UDO in Asheville as well as post. And um, I would like to briefly address this uh, group, if I can, uh, representing uh, bed and breakfast in general, as well as specifically my own in particular. Um, I would like to reiterate the, the notion of guest safety uh, when it comes to short-term rental uh, specifically. Um, we have, again, all of the fire inspections and so on that go along with our properties. You don't have to be a big hotel to be subject to that. It is our job to make sure that the people who stay with us are happy, but they're also safe. Uh, secondly, bed and breakfast, as well as other properties of larger size, pay the county room tax. Uh, we are st stable, well-maintained properties who make significant contributions uh, to the GDP in this area. Uh, we agree with the gentleman who spoke just now about wanting tourists to come. Clearly we do, we always have, and we accommodate them very well, and I can assure you they do not stay in dorm rooms. Uh, th thirdly, um, the issue of the supervision, I think, or lack of that, is, is what is central to many of the neighbors and was, in fact, in the neighborhoods, uh, including my own, uh, in the discussion of the Asheville issue and clearly by the people who are behind me here living in Fairview. Um, a bed and breakfast in, Mount, in Asheville is required to have an on-site manager or full-time resident, AKA me in this case, uh, the innkeeper uh, living there. And that the purpose of that was created in the UDO uh, and so on to make sure that guests would also be safe and supervised. It's not always that they're going to be doing bad things, but if somebody needs help, that you have someone on site who can actually help them. Uh, whether it's get to a hospital or whatever it is they need to do. Going on uh, st uh, about the issue of supervision and then by uh, enforcement, it looks as if the neighbors feel as if they are the only ones, and in fact they are, the only ones who can supervise a rental property next to them. Empty houses in residential zones uh, that are even vacation rentals, you can be assured that the neighborhoods will, the neighbors will never know whether the person who just walked in there was in fact a renter, rather than a squatter, rather than a vandal, rather than a thief. Uh, the neighborhoods don't have any idea what is uh, certainty in that regard, uh, which makes the neighborhood unsafe uh, by its very nature. Uh, that forcing the enforcement of something like this onto the neighbors themselves is an unfair thing to do. And it does seem that Buncombe County has many, many zones in which residential, uh, that are non-residential in the technical sense anyway, where the Mountain View cabin and home that everyone is looking for already exists or can exist uh, in perfect uh, consonance with the zoning and with the neighbors. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, over here first, please. Right. 
My name is Chip Craig. I'm the owner of Graybeard Realty, and we specialize in vacation rentals. I want to thank you all for letting me speak today and hearing this. A um, couple of things I'd like to bring up on some comments that I heard today. Um, we do pay taxes. We pay use tax and sales tax. My little firm last year paid 75000 in occupancy tax and 148000 in sales tax. Um, the current Asheville does has a zoning ordinance that re restricts um, vacation rentals. And I do not operate my business in, vaca in Asheville because that would be illegal. But you still have tons and tons of vacation rentals in Asheville. This current ordinance is before, bef the current ordinance as it stands now is complaint driven that the county has. So what's going to happen is you're going to drive companies like me out of business, the ones that do pay the taxes. And what you're going to end up with is a bunch of people that don't have on-site management, that don't, don't respond when there's a complaint like we do. And I'm very sorry about the people that are in Butler Mountain. That would not be my vacation rental house. I would not do that. We would be there. We're on call 24 hours a day. It sounds like they have a really bad house in Butler Mountain. Um, I currently have three vacation houses adjacent to my house. I live in Montreat. Um, I have 125 within a mile of my house. I don't have a problem with vacation rentals in my area. It's a very self-selecting crowd. We do not, vacationers do not want to be in a neighborhood. They don't want to feel like they're in Charlotte. They want to feel like they're in the mountains, so they like privacy. There's two issues that have come up really about from the hotel industry, safety and regulations and competition. Number one, safety. Um, <laughs> these are the same houses that you guys live in. They have four, six, three, two bedrooms. They're not huge hotels. I mean, it, why is it safe for somebody to be there for, a, you know, as a full-time resident, but if they come for a weekend, it's all of a sudden unsafe? I don't understand that. We don't serve food. We do have a certain standard that we have fire extinguishers in all levels, smoke detectors in every bedroom. Again, if you get rid of the property managers like you, you could, um, we won't be there around to inspect them. We do inspect our houses once a year. Um, with the safety inspection. And if we go over 15, we have to fall back and we don't do that, but we have to, if we have over 15 houses, then we have to go and um, do a, uh, a huge safety inspection, like similar to a hotel. Um, we don't compete with hotels. I mean, I keep think I talked to our vacation rental, the people that take reservations. Do we compete? How often do we, they compare a hotel to a house? And they say it never happens. And it's true, the same person may stay in a hotel one vacation or may stay in a house the next. I went down with my wife recently to Hilton Head and we stayed in a hotel. In August, we're going to go down there, we're staying in a house because it's family driven. Biltmore Forest allows vacation rentals. They encourage vacation or they have vacation rentals. It's not a bad thing. Um, last point, I find it hard to believe, and this is, may upset some folks, that you would limit individual property rights because of fear of competition from the hotel industry. And that just does not seem right to me. Thank you all, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, the lady in green, did you, would you like to come up, I think? I just have a very few brief comments to make today to you all. Um, speak, state your name, yes, please. Yes, my name is Patty Wiles, and I am, um, my husband and I own at Cumberland Falls Bed and Breakfast Inn. Um, I think the thing that really drew us to Asheville is its heart and its community and its real desire to keep that intact. I have a unique <coughs> perspective to bring. We came here from Monroe County, Florida, in the Florida Keys. Um, we lived in a place called Port Largo. Port Largo was a lovely community. It was a lovely neighborhood setting. Kids were safe. Everybody knew each other. We all walked in the evening. Everybody knew who was supposed to be here. Everybody knew who wasn't. Port <coughs> Largo began this vacation rental thing. It was it was really the destruction of the neighborhood. In Key Largo, really, a lot of the homes are people just build, they live in Miami, and they then travel on the weekend only 
to come and stay in their homes. I think they basically decided it would be a means by which to get money and income, so they started renting these homes. The entire character of our neighborhood changed. Um, I agree totally with the gentleman who said about his kids out doing the running. You don't know where your kids are anymore. You don't know your neighbors. You don't know what your, who your neighbors are. You have no control whatsoever. Safety becomes an issue. Further, in economic times as we currently have, where these places may go empty for a very long time as they did in our neighborhood, that creates problems of its own kind as well. These houses are burglarized um, because they are not occupied by people that are known when people who are not known are there. Residents are much less likely to understand whether these are vacation people or others. Drug use began to be a serious problem. Other problems happened in the neighborhood as well. Um, teenage kids occupying these homes for a period of time in the evening. Um, it's something we all, Asheville's a great place. I mean, it's, it, we have such community heart here. We really strive to do the right thing here. We strive to have our community belong to us and for us to feel safe within it. Our neighborhoods need to remain that. They need to be neighborhoods. They need to be filled with people that we know. We need to have some accountability as to who these people are. And I hope you guys will give this really good and, and serious thought. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else? You, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, my name is Mary Bridges, and I was at the last meeting also. I have a bed and breakfast in town, and I have vacation rentals in the county. So, uh, and then, you know, I'm a resident of Asheville as well, so I have different uh, reasons for wanting to be here. Um, I do feel for the Butler Mountain. That does sound like a bad issue or circumstance there that needs to be resolved. I hope they can get that resolved. Um, I do. Uh, the reason that, that these are here is because of economics. There's a demand for it. Uh, people want to come here and that's what they want to buy. And I'm a capitalist. I believe in free enterprise and uh, I, I think it's a great way for Asheville to uh, create ways for people to make a living. I think it's a great kind of um, industry for our town rather than other kinds of industry. And uh, we have a great demand for it and therefore there's a supply and it's gonna be there. Uh, hopefully it could be, I, I agree that, that some kind of regulation would hopefully make it, uh, one, the city and the county can get more money from it perhaps and also making it safe for everyone to be involved with. Um, as an owner of these properties since before uh, 2009, is that it? It would actually probably be to my benefit to, to not have these allowed because I'm grandfathered in, perhaps. Uh, and so I don't, the, ma the market is, you know, getting more and more saturated. It's not, it's really to my benefit to not have other people be able to do it, but I just am such a strong believer that tourism is such a great thing for our city and county, and it's a great way to bring people into the, to the town. Um, my properties all have to get uh, inspected, uh, just as the B&B does, a little differently. Uh, I, my insurance won't allow me not to have it inspected, and it's fire and many, many other safety kinds of things. So perhaps something without having to reinvent the wheel, as simple as having people show a certificate of insurance that proves that, that I mean, it's, we live in a litigious country. It would, it would be, well, in any event, it's not to my benefit to not have insurance. Uh, and anyway, perhaps that would be a great way to, easy way to, to show that inspections have occurred. Fire, lighting, um, all, all kinds of, of safety things. Spa, uh, hot tub kinds of things. Um, let's see. I think also we're comparing city, sometimes mixing city uh, concerns with county concerns, and that worries me a little bit when I hear the conversations. I think they're different. I think we're also mixing uh, sometimes big business or bigger business and really teeny small businesses. Um, and uh, I think that covers it. I'm very much in support of having vacation rentals as a, a wonderful way to 
uh, provide business and I think it's safe for our neighborhoods as well. There's actually an organization called smartgrowth.org, if anybody wants to review it, that does have eight principles and mixed use is indicated in that for our residential neighborhoods. And uh, they imply that mixed use zoning actually increases safety in our neighborhoods. Uh, but anyway, if anybody wants to look that up, that's smartgrowth.org. It's a national organization. Those okay. principles are pretty interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, next, I believe I saw one or two other hands. Is there, Mr. Gopher? Good morning. Uh, my name's Al Gumpert, uh, resident of Buncombe County. Uh, I think we've had a lot of good comments this morning. Uh, I, I would say the, the current zoning ordinance provides a, protection for residential neighborhoods from encroachment from business operations and now this board once again wants to consider giving access to our neighborhoods to special interest groups of realtors, investors, and property managers. Uh, these folks would bring business operations that would be frankly intrusive. I think one of the best comments this morning was that you become dependent on neighbors to police what's going on at a rental, a vacation rental. And that's not something I want to do. I'm sure it's not something you want to do. And we've had an unpleasant experience in our neighborhood as well, uh, where suddenly we found the property that had been sold was being uh, rented out as, as a party house, frankly. Uh, and it took a good bit of effort uh, upon the part of some of my neighbors to shut that down. Uh, the idea that uh, communities can be well protected or well served by uh, uh, covenants uh, is not true. Uh, most covenants don't cover this issue because it was never conceived that you would even think of having short-term rentals in a residential district. Uh, it becomes very hard to change covenants. Uh, and, and when you e even have a covenant, it requires that you go to law to enforce a covenant. And most of us are not willing to uh, get into a litigious uh, uh, type uh, of activity if we can avoid it. So we're dependent on the county to protect its residential neighborhoods. Uh, and from my reading of the pr original proposal, there's really no enforcement you're not considering, uh, if you're talking about single home rental, you're not considering the parking situation, you're not considering the safety, you're not considering the uh, maximum occupation uh, uh, of the residents. It, you're issuing a blank check. Um, and it's a, it's a you're suggesting it be a permitted use, not a conditional use. If it were to be a conditional use, there would at least be public notification, neighbor notification, and a public hearing. Uh, this becomes a, a stealth type thing. You know, most people, uh, most of the public won't know what's happened until it's happened. Um, I request that each of you consider how you would feel about having your neighborhood uh, invaded by rental property. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Do we have anyone else? Well, seeing no one else is interested in coming up speaking today, uh, we'll just close uh, the public comment. Uh, item on our agenda and uh, move forward. I uh, want to thank everybody and appreciate all the interest. I think it's very healthy to get the comments that we did today. Uh, I wasn't here. I actually uh, had to leave the meeting early, I think, when this original language was passed back in early March or February, whenever it was. So I didn't have a chance to go through the public hearing process, but uh, I think today's exercise has been beneficial for me. I'm sure it has for my peers as well. Um, 
And as I discussed a little earlier, I think what we'll do is move forward with asking staff to uh, give us uh, information uh, from comparable situations around the nation and locally and this type of thing. Again, the goal to be <coughs> being goal, hopefully we can adhere to it, uh, is to come back here in June and uh, at our next meeting, which will be two weeks from today, and uh, discuss a retooling of the language uh, that we previously sent to the county commissioners. Does anyone else uh, have anything to offer uh, on the board this morning regarding this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to reinforce your request to the staff to look at what other communities are doing. Uh, we're not the first one to have to struggle with this issue. And uh, I think it's really important to see the ones that uh, are working and how they're working and um, what they had to do to make it work. Okay. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Again, I want to thank everyone. Uh, I think it's been a healthy exercise. And I'm sure we'll be uh, hearing from you again. I, I, again, the timeline um, would probably be what, I guess, public hearing sometime in July, maybe. Uh, after we retool this language uh, but I'm sure you'll keep abreast of it uh, again thank you very much all right uh, the last item on our agenda is to adjourn do I have a motion so, so move. move so move Second. <laughs> we got two we got two <laughs> so, okay all in favor say aye thank you well that's a toughie I think it was wrong I think it was yeah we gotta have yeah. they gotta have